Join us for the One Accord Marriage Conference, May 1st and 2nd at Lafayette's Cajun Dome Convention Center. Guest speakers are Pastor Sam and Marita Brooks of The Open Door, Mark and Melissa Dunwa from The Kitchen Table Counseling, Pastor Steve Horn of First Baptist, Pastor Ivan and Sheila Lede of Jubilee Nation, Pastor Todd Menard from Family Life Church, Pastor Sidney and Patty Morales of Alpha and Omega Church, Pastor Bobby and Shannon Richard from Hope Alive, and Pastor Omar and Chantel Thibault from Philadelphia Christian Church. Register today at oneaccordmarriage.com. And when we say he found, he unpacks, he unloaded, he unfolded the scriptures, not only reading them, but explaining them in a fashion, amen, by which the disciples could understand. Many women were there beholding afar off, which followed Jesus from Galilee in Matthew 27, 55, ministering unto him, among which was Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's children. So we're, we're, we're told a few of the women that were in the ministry of Christ. Now, these are the major women that was in the ministry of Christ. You have uh, Mary Magdalene, amen, who was a woman, hallelujah, who had a real deep and dark past, amen. But the Lord can save even them and put them in the ministry. You with me so far? Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, Mary, the mother of James and Joseph. This one is called the other Mary. Uh, she's not Mary, uh, Jesus' wife, but they just call her the other Mary. And so she was there as well. And one of her sons was an apostle. Uh, then you had the mother of Zebedee's children. Her name is uh, Salome. And uh, she's the one that went to Christ, if you remember, and said, Jesus, can my son sit at your right hand and on your left hand? Now, I want to tell you something about these women. You see, is 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 what I see here when I see the mother of Zebedee's children, and I see the mother of James and Joseph. I see a charge to the women of God. A charge that says, if your children follow in Christ, don't try to stop them from following Christ. You need to follow Christ too. You not only need to follow Christ too, but you need to go ahead and be a part of the ministry too. And if your children serving and they being blessed and they getting off of drugs and they getting off of alcohol and they are, are moving on up, don't try to take them out of church. Don't try to take them away from Jesus. You need to go to the place where your children are being blessed and say, listen, I don't know who you are, what you're doing with my child, but it's working, and I'm going to be there right alongside of them, and I'm going to encourage them. You know how many people, their parents try to pull them out of a good place? Look at, the Zeb look at Zebedee mama. I mean Zeb Zebedee's wife, James and John, the mother. You see, look at the other Mary. No, no, no. Not only will I encourage my child to go, I'm going to be there with them. You see what I'm saying? And that's one thing I can say about my mama sitting on that second row. You see? And my mama, listen, my mama done been through a lot. You see? Losing husband, losing, losing her, her oldest son. You see? And a lot of other things she done been through. And listen, may not be perfect because none of us are perfect. But there's one thing I can say about Carrie May Praise on Tebow. She ain't never stopped us from going after God. I'm talking about when Miss Rose was having that Bible study by the house. Now listen, we a family, we not even really living for God. We not even really in church. But when Miss Rose opened up our house and said we having a Bible study, my mama made sure I was there. Go to Bible study. You see? Go to Bible study. You see? When we started the church, amen, hallelujah. She had her own religion she was growing up in. But listen, she said, no, nah, my son loving the Lord. The Lord done changed my son's life. Hallelujah. And he's with this ministry and he's part of this ministry. Guess where Carrie May going to be as well? With the ministry. And here this morning. And so as I look at the two women that God done put in my life, my wife and my mama, boy, I'm blessed. You hear me? You hear me? A mama that's going to support me. You see what I'm saying? And y'all just don't know. Y'all just don't know.
coming out of law school with $50 coming from Baton Rouge. Who do you think brought us in Chantel to live with a mom sitting back there? Opened the office, didn't have no furniture for the office. Who do you think came through with five, six thousand dollars bought the furniture for the office? Mom? The church ever needed something that we didn't have or whatever like that? Who do you think I could turn down? That when we were smaller, you see, we don't turn them nobody no more. <laughs> who, do you, who do you think we could turn to? Mom? You see? And when the church grew, and needed a first lady with giftings, with callings, to be able to minister, not just on the strong side. I got my side. But who going to minister to this other side? The ladies, the women's conference, this, that. Man, listen, man. Woman of God, I challenge you, I charge you. Whether you're a mother, whether you're a wife, be saved. And not only be saved, but be all that you can be in Christ. Let it go, my friend. And, and... Let the Lord use you. You see, you don't know what's on the inside of you. You just don't know. You see? Oh, yeah. The Bible tells us in Luke 8 and verse 2. Hallelujah. And certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene. She was always mentioned, amen, with the women because she was pretty much probably a leader on that side of the women's ministry. Hallelujah. Out of whom went seven devils. You see, the Lord delivered her from, from evil spirits. But look at these two in verse 3. And Joanna and Chusa, Herod's steward. Uh, and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's steward, and Susanna. And many others which ministered unto him of their substance. Now, I want to look at and focus on verse 3. Two women besides Mary Magdalene who was in the upper room with Jesus and a part of his ministry. You got Joanna and Susanna. These two women, like Mary Magdalene, the Lord did something great for them. He delivered them from evil spirits. He might have healed their bodies. But when they came to the ministry of Christ, they were blessed. Somebody say bless. Yes. A result of that blessing was, listen, I'm not going to be in a place that's blessing me and not bless that place back. You with me so far? We got a lot of people, they get blessed, the, the Lord will bless them, hallelujah, but they won't give nothing blessed back. That's not a good heart to have. If somebody blessing you, listen, your heart should be, listen, I'm going to be a blessing too. You with me so far? That's called reciprocity. You understand what I'm saying? And that's what makes a relationship. You see? A relationship can't be just one-sided. Just taken. And you got a lot of Christians, they just takers. They come on Sundays, they come on Tuesdays, they're part of a ministry, and they'll get everything from the ministry, but they're not adding nothing to the ministry. Joanna and Susanna wasn't like that. They say, if I'm going to be blessed in any kind of way, listen, I know that the Lord has blessed me in some areas. Listen, in this area, I was weak. I was messed up. My marriage, my children, my health, my mental state. And if you can fix me in this area, I'm not messed up in every area. I'm blessed in this area. If you, if you, if you fix the messed up area, listen, in my blessed area, I'm going to bless you. Y'all with me so far? Oh, you got to hear me up in here. You got to hear me. Well, Susanna and Joanna were blessed financially. Messed up spiritually. Messed up physically in their bodies. Socially. Relationships. Messed up. All messed up in those areas. But they were blessed financially. Jesus had all the answers, amen, for the relationship issues, the spiritual issues. But he had a need in the financial area. So if I can bless you in your relationship, mental, physical areas, and I have a need in financial, but you got blessings in the financial, and you can help me in the financial. I help you in relationship, you help me in the financial. Y'all with me so far? You see the reciprocity there? You see the relationship there? You see? Woman of God, you saved. You blessed. But you come to Philadelphia, 
and we got that husband right for you. He in church. He never was in church before. We got your mental state right. No more thoughts of suicide. No more, no more that depression you're suffering with. We got your body right. You find yourself not even struggling with the infirmities that you started off with. Woman of God, it's not only good for you to be saved. It's not only good for you to grow with your husband, amen, but you need to have a heart, amen, of reciprocity. If I'm, if I'm in the ministry and the ministry is blessing me, I'm going to be a blessing to the men. Anybody hear me up in here? And so tithing and giving shouldn't be no problem because that's what the women of God did in Jesus' ministry. You see? And we have women of God like that in Philadelphia. You know? You know, just this Tuesday, a woman of God walked up to me. She gave me a $10,000 check. Woman of God. She said, here, Pastor. And y'all would be surprised. That's not her first $10,000 check she done gave. You understand what I'm saying? Just walk up to me. Just here, Pastor. And take your wife uh, out to eat. You see? Why? Because the Lord is ministering in those other areas. Now, she blessed in the financial area. But the Lord is ministering those other areas that money can't fix. You understand what I'm saying? And so, and so to some people, they have the money. And money is not a big deal to them. Because it comes easily. Here's a revelation. When you are a giver, money will come easily to you. You understand what I'm saying? You only worry about money when you're not a giver. But when you're a giver, money coming to the givers. You with me so far? And so money not an issue for her, man. And you know what I'm saying? It come. And not only is that money annoying is on her, but it's on her children. Her ch it's all over the place. They all pay. All right, before I reveal too much. But listen. But those other areas, money can't fix those other areas. But the word of God can. And Jesus can. And, and, and ministry can. And there's some people, man, listen, and that's the type of man of God and woman of God you need to want, you, you should want to be. Lord, if you bless these areas in my life that nothing can change, you can have anything you want, God. I'll tithe, I'll offer, I'll do whatever. I'll, Lord, in the name of Jesus. What you need to understand that Jesus' ministry was sustained by Joanna, Susanna, and some of, some of the other women of God. And I'm praying in my spirit that God will raise up women and raise up men like Joanna, like Susanna, like the woman of God who met me uh, uh, Tuesday, amen, hallelujah, and uh, Tuesday night after Bible study, you know. We say, Pastor, listen, I would give it if I had it. No, 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 no. You got to give it before you have it. You understand what I'm saying? You got to give where you are now, you see. And Lord's going to open up that heart for you. Hallelujah. And then he's going to begin to bless you. Y'all with me so far? Amen. Hallelujah. What I see here is these women were so instrumental in ministering to Jesus out of their own substance. They were such a blessing to him that he put their names in the Bible. Wouldn't that be something? That he put their names in the Bible. You see it? Joanna. And Susanna. You see? I'm talking about the importance of women to the kingdom. You see? I do not believe that God can only move through men. I don't believe that. And I will not receive that. I don't believe that God can only move through men because as I look at the scriptures it, the Bible don't say that. You see? I believe that God can and has moved already through many women of God, biblically and historically. And God wants to move through you, woman of God. I think of Deborah in the Old Testament. Deborah was a prophetess, if y'all don't know. And Deborah showed up in a time when Israel was oppressed, in poverty, in sin, and there was not a man on the planet, or in the nation of Israel, that was man enough to stand up, but Deborah stood up. And Deborah could hear God. 
and Deborah got a word from God, and, and, and God told Deborah, go to Barak. Still to come on Expounding Truth Ministries with Omar Tebow. A bumblebee, when you look at it scientifically, is not supposed to fly. The body is too big and the wings are too small. Scientists can't figure it out. It's not supposed to fly. And they can't make a plane like it. Could you imagine a plane with small wings and the fuselage and the passenger? You wouldn't even get on that thing. What is that? I ain't getting on that thing. But yet and still, you be out there looking at nature, that big old bumblebee just laying on a flower. Join us for the One Accord Marriage Conference, May 1st and 2nd at Lafayette's Cajun Dome Convention Center. Guest speakers are Pastor Sam and Marita Brooks of The Open Door, Mark and Melissa Dunwa from The Kitchen Table Counseling, Pastor Steve Horn of First Baptist, Pastor Ivan and Sheila Lede of Jubilee Nation, Pastor Todd Menard from Family Life Church, Pastor Sidney and Patty Morales of Alpha and Omega Church, Pastor Bobby and Shannon Richard from Hope Alive, and Pastor Omar and Chantel Tebow from Philadelphia Christian Church. Register today at oneaccordmarriage.com. In sin, and there was not a man on the planet, or in the nation of Israel, that was man enough to stand up, but Deborah stood up. And Deborah could hear God. And Deborah got a word from God, and, and, and God told Deborah, go to Barak and tell Barak, get me an army together, and we're going to break y'all out of y'all oppression. We'll break y'all out of your slavery. We'll break you out. Amen. And when Deborah went to Barak, Barak said, I ain't going by myself. You're going to have to come with me. And woman of God, there's some men in your life that will not be able to accomplish some things unless you go with him. Somebody didn't catch that. It might be your son. It might be your husband. You know? But there's some women of God so strong, so talented, so connected with God that they need you to accomplish the work that God had for them, you know? And I'm going to be honest with you, you know? That's how I feel about my little wife, you know? Yeah, I've been gifted with some things, yeah. But you would never know all the things that she do in the background. You see what I'm saying? Most of the big events that we do, listen, I just show up. You understand what I'm saying? And Sundays included. But all the different administrative things that got to go on, she working that out. I'm in the Word up late at night, and she on the computer working out the fine print and the details about how everything going to go. You understand what I'm saying? When I'm finished with church, brother Doug, I'm ready to go home and eat. She want to talk about the experience, how the lights were. She want to talk about how the music was, how the microphones were. Did the sound booth get the video projector right? Hint, hint. She won't, she won't, she won't, she won't talk about all the detail, you know? And I'm just ready to get me a big plate of something and just sit down and chill. But you don't understand. All of those details go into the experience of Philadelphia when you show up in the morning. If the carpet is clean, if, if, the, if, if everything is right, you see? You see, there are some men of God who need you, woman of God, to be all that they can be in the Lord. Amen. And it's time for you to stand up, take your rightful place, be a Deborah, hear from God, get a word from God, go to your Barak and say, I heard from my God. That we coming out of oppression, depression, poverty, and chains and slaves. We coming out, and Barack might be, listen, I can't do this by myself. I, you're going to have to come with me. And Deborah said, I will come. <laughs> and I believe in that upper room. Those women wasn't there just for, for furniture pieces. 
They were there because the men of God needed them there. Listen to me good. One of the strengths of Philadelphia is the women's ministry. <laughs> One of the strengths. I done been to a lot of churches, Sabrina. I've been to a lot of places. And some places are one-dimensional. You're either going to have the women on fire or you're going to have just the men on fire. All the women truly love God while the men still drinking, smoking, cussing, doing everything else. That's some churches. And then you got other churches where the men are on fire. You read the word, pray, preach, but the women don't even show up to church. Still gossiping, still tripping, still cutting up, still messing around on the preacher's time. But when you get a church when both sides are in order, and the men love the Lord and on fire, and the women of God are on fire, and the strong side and the weak side are intact. The men of God are there saying, we watching our side. And the women of God saying, we got our side too. You see? That's what I think makes Philadelphia so strong. So strong. You know? There's some churches out here, and they're going to be listening to this. Check your sides, man. Check your sides. Some churches with no women's ministry, no women's side that's strong. You know? I could name the names. I, I, I know them, but that's not my business. You understand what I'm saying? I know them. I, I, I pay attention to the churches in the area. I want to see how every single one of them doing. You know? And so we've been blessed. We've been blessed with a first lady that has let her gifts go. Amen. Open up a women's side. Got a women's 12 ministry. Got women in ministry head positions. Got women, amen, moving and shaking, teaching and preaching. Going to Atlanta to women's conferences. Amen. I mean, y'all moving, man. Y'all got some things going on. You know? And you think I'm sitting down thinking about all that? Woman of God, man. You see? But for you, your husband need a Deborah. I got my Deborah. Your husband need a Deborah. Your husband need one. You see? Y'all with me so far? I'm just talking. I'm just talking. I think of Esther in the Bible. Esther changed the world. Esther changed the world. You understand what I'm saying? Man, her people, listen, her people was facing genocide from the wicked hands of a Hitler-like man by the name of Haman. This little girl named Esther, who was an orphan, both her parents had died, living with a family member, some say her uncle, some say her cousin, by the name of Mordecai. She's not supposed to be anything. She's not supposed to save nothing. She's from the hood. She's from the ghetto. It's like some of y'all. Mama was on crack. Daddy in jail. You're not supposed to be anything, let alone save a nation. But let me tell you, what, what man says is impossible, God says it's a possibility, and God will do it. I'm trying to tell you, woman of God, it don't matter where you're from. Don't matter where you come from, who your daddy was, who your mama was, your past don't make a difference. But if you just get connected with God and allow God to save you, raise you up, and you let go what's inside of you, God will raise you up to be a Deborah. He'll raise you up to be an Esther, and he can save a whole nation through you. He can. You'll be a modern-day Harriet Tubman. You'll be a modern-day Rosa Parks. You'll be a modern-day Eleanor Roosevelt. And God can do it through you if you just let go of what's on the inside of you. A lot of y'all waiting on God, and I believe in my spirit specifically for the women of God and some men as well. You waiting on God while God waiting on you. He's saying, I know what I put in you. And you running this morning, running for fear. 
Don't want to talk in front of nobody. Don't want to dance and worship and pray. Don't want to come up here and sing. Don't want to move in the ministry. What are you scared of? You was born for greater than that. What you scared to fail? I would rather fail trying than fail not trying. At least when they said go, I ran. The boy, they can lie all you fell on your face. Yeah, but you in the stands. You ain't doing nothing. Let it go. Be a Esther, be a Deborah. The word Deborah, and I know we on Esther, the word Deborah in the Hebrew, my wife taught about this, it means a bee. A bee, like a bumblebee. That's what Deborah means. And there's a particular bee, uh, the big bumblebee is, 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 is huge. That's the ones when you see flying around and you run from? Yeah, I'm not going to tell that story about you running from that bumblebee. But that bumblebee came close, she hit herself. She, whoa! I said, babe! All right, so listen. It just came out, babe. A bumblebee, when you look at it scientifically, is not supposed to fly. The body is too big and the wings are too small. Scientists can't figure it out. It's not supposed to fly. And they can't make a plane like it. Could you imagine a plane with small wings and a fuselage and a passenger? And you wouldn't even get on that thing. What is that? I ain't getting on that thing. But yet and still, you'd be out there looking at nature, and that big old bumblebee just laying on a flower. And with them little wings, like... <laughs> we got some bumblebees up in here. Straight out the hood. Straight out the hood. And you're not supposed to fly. You're not supposed to. You're not supposed to excel. You're not supposed to own your own business. You're not supposed to finish that degree. You're not supposed to do those things, judging from where you came from. See? But my God, can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all, we ask, hope, think, or imagine if we just give him an opportunity, even the bumblebees will fly. Join us for the One Accord Marriage Conference, May 1st and 2nd at Lafayette's Cajun Dome Convention Center. Guest speakers are Pastor Sam and Marita Brooks of The Open Door, Mark and Melissa Dunwa from The Kitchen Table Counselor, Pastor Steve Horn of First Baptist, Pastor Ivan and Sheila Lede of Jubilee Nation, Pastor Todd Menard from Family Life Church, Pastor Sidney and Patty Morales of Alpha and Omega Church, Pastor Bobby and Shannon Richard from Hope Alive, and Pastor Omar and Chantel Thibault from Philadelphia Christian Church. Register today at oneaccordmarriage.com.